So right now we're at the Douglas Theater, probably one of the most famous musical landmarks in Macon, Georgia. It was a theater that started in the early 1920s by an entrepreneur and Macon's first African-American millionaire, Charles Douglas, and it became a cornerstone to the music industry and to performing African-American artists throughout the South. So Charles Douglas was an important figure in Macon history because he was Macon's first African-American millionaire. But he started out with very humble beginnings. He was the son of a former slave who began working as soon as he was old enough to do it. He began working with the um, Florida Blossoms Minstrel Circuit and um, how to network different uh, venues that would play or, or showcase African-American artists. And what that did was it led, the, um, led to the groundwork for the Chitlin Circuit, as we call it today. He opened this Douglas Theater as a premier vaudeville hall uh, in the 20s. And not only did it host great um, blues performers like Ida Cox and Bessie Smith, Ma Rainey, but it would also have become an important movie uh, theater venue for African-American filmmakers. So it became a premier spot in the entertainment industry, and it um, made Macon an important stop along the way. In fact, the street that the Douglas Theater is on became known as the Black Broadway of the South. And so the Douglas um, Theater and Charles Douglas himself were just really important in building that network of entertainment and touring possibilities. And what's interesting when you get into the later years, into the 1950s, um, that jazz uh, led to eventually the formation of rhythm and blues. And it was here that some of the premier soul artists, such as James Brown and Otis Redding, actually graced this stage. Rhythm and Blues began getting its start um, not long after the break of Little Richard. We call Little Richard the architect of rock and roll, but he really became an inspiration for African American artists here in Macon that if he could make it, maybe they could too. And um, it started out as race records, as they would call it, those 45s that were newly pressed were known as race records because they couldn't quite put their finger on that sound. Young artists like Otis Redding would come to local talent shows to perform and, and try to gain some notoriety. The Douglas became a host of probably the most well-known talent show in the area. It was called Hamp Swain's Teenage Party, and it was broadcast live on the radio on WIBB. And it was here during those talent shows that young Otis, who was known as Rock House Redding, would win consistently. I mean, nobody could beat him. Nobody could uh, outplay him. And um, one of the listeners on that radio station happened to be my uncle, Phil Walden, who would eventually become a business partner and manager with Otis Redding. Phil heard that, that early sound of Otis that would later make him so famous, that amazing soul that he was able to project. That's something that you could just feel. I mean, it was truly music that you could feel. For whatever reason, whatever fate may have it here in Macon, Georgia, these two young guys, a black guy and a white guy in a segregated South, were able to look at each other, shake hands, and form this unbelievable partnership that would lead to the commercial success of Southern Soul music. The Douglas Theater is just a beautiful example of some of the, the rich history and architecture in Macon. Um, the theater survived through the Roaring Twenties and the Great Depression and, and then through the, the, this interjection of rhythm and blues, but in the 70s it did eventually fall into disrepair and um, it was closed down and eventually um, questionable if it could ever open again. It was severely dilapidated. And in the late 90s, um, with the help of a, a private businessman and then the, the city working together, they were able to restore this theater to a lot of its original glory. Um, I, you know, I still get chills when I see that stage and think about all the people who've walked across it um, and have 
performed here. Now we actively use it as a community. You can um, see anything from art house films on the big screen when they bring it down to local talent shows today with some of our rising stars. It's a beautiful piece of history of, of Macon. Um, probably one of my favorite parts of it is if you look at the paintings on the wall, the actual chain stenciling represents the bondage of slavery, but then in the corners the chains are broken, um, representing that freedom. And um, you know, it was here that, with rhythm and blues, so much happened in in that sense of race relations. And with the foresight of Charles Douglas, such a big thinker, he really paved the way for Macon to become a music mecca that it grew into over the years, way past his lifetime.